Well, good to see you all out tonight. Um, it's Wednesday night Bible study. We had our uh, our fifth uh, our fifth Sunday, our uh, Wednesday night dinner, and. Um, we just got done with the burgers and dogs. There are some leftover burgers and dogs. Feel free to go by there on the way out. And if you see something, want to grab it, grab it. Hallelujah. I'm sure in the hot, the hot dogs for sure, there's enough sodium in them. You could leave them out for a week and they probably wouldn't go to bad. Hallelujah. <laughs> All righty. We are continuing our teaching on uh, faith foundations. Last week we were talking about the threefold nature of man. Man is a spirit, possesses a soul, lives in a body. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 says, I pray, Paul writing to the church of Thessalonica says, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body, pneuma, suke, and soma, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord. Praise the Lord. So man is, um, is a three-part being. We're talking about how the soul and the spirit remain intact together. We talked about the fact that um, that the body, well, I don't know if we actually covered this other than brushing by it, but that the, the spirit and the soul exist out, can exist outside the body. But even at that, um, we didn't get into this last week, but uh, when we return, when the Lord returns, those who are dead in Christ, those who are asleep, those who, whose, whose spirits have been separated from the bodies, uh, their bodies, they'll, they'll get a new body. They'll get that body. Their body will be raised up out of the ground, and they'll put on that glorified body. And then we, which are alive and remain, shall be changed in the moment and twinkling of an eye. This corruptible shall put on uh, incorruption. Mortal shall put on immortality. And we, so shall we ever be with the Lord. But those who are dead in Christ, those who have gone before, they're going to come back and get a body. Right now, they are incomplete. So they are incomplete. They don't have their glorified bodies. Uh, they're waiting for that. Okay, so they have spirit and soul, but they're they're waiting for their glorified bodies. Praise the Lord. So um, we talked about how that the soul and the spirit stay intact. Hebrews 4:12 makes reference to that the that the um, um, that the word of God separates the soul from the spirit and. Uh, Although they remain intact, they are not the same thing. You couldn't separate if they were the same thing. And so let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Kind of, I'll just kind of, kind of do a real rough um, catch up. Glory to God. If you weren't here the week before last when Joe Morris was here, I encourage you to go out and, and uh, pick it up off the internet and, um, and, and hear those services. Praise the Lord. And then Sunday, we had us a good time in the Lord. Amen. Had good services. Encourage you to come out on Sunday nights for our um, prayer services. We teach on prayer and then we pray uh, on the first Sunday night of the month with the communion and healing service. So we encourage you to bring the sick. And, um, you know, if, if you can't get them, actually get them here, bring prayer cloths. We'll pray over the prayer cloths and send them out. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, we probably ought to just kind of pick up in verse 9, but as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what, knoweth, uh, what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have, not, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, uh, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And so uh, we understand the word is spiritually understood, spiritually discerned. You're, you're not going to get it with your head. You know, there's a lot of people who have a lot of head knowledge about the Bible, know the Greek, know the Hebrew, uh, can give you the shades of meanings and tell you how it reads in the Greek and what it means in the Greek, and still not get it. Uh, one of my um, favorite examples is uh, Kenneth Wiest is, is a, is a well-known or was, I mean, you know, he's passed away now, but was a well-known Greek scholar. 
and uh, I mean, one of the highest um, scholars in the world, and yet he still referred to the Christian as the believing sinner. Terms are not even using the Bible. So um, you, you can understand things naturally and still not get the revelation. So we, we trust, the, we want to trust the Holy Ghost. Everybody say, trust the Holy Ghost. That's the, the, let the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, teach us. Amen. Not in our heads, but in our hearts. Glory to God. It's good to know Scripture. It's good to memorize Scripture. It's good to be aware of what Scripture is. But we need the teacher, the unction, the anointing. Hallelujah. Teaching us in the inner man. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, the word is spiritually understood. When we say to believe with the heart, it means to believe with the spirit. Now, I mean, this is a little sharp. Um, and I, I don't, don't want to sit here and pierce everybody's ears all night. I just, it's coming out real sharp. Is that, is that, no, that's still, is that better or is it still sharp? Okay. I, I, keep, I keep hearing some things coming back off the back wall. That's better. Okay. That can get annoying after a while. I, don't know. I mean, I, that's annoying me, and I'm, and I'm just hearing it. I don't know what to say like to y'all. Praise God. To believe with the heart is to believe with the Spirit. Remember, now here we said, the natural man receives not the things of the, of the Spirit of God, for there is foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Verse 15, but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And so we, verse 14 is really, in 13 and 14, really kind of show you that we have to understand the things of God with our spirit. They're, they're received spiritually. They're understood spiritually. They are revealed to us in our spirits. And then our minds are renewed and we just keep our body under. <laughs> That's all you can do with your body. You can't, I mean, until, until you get a glorified body, you just got to keep it under. It's always going to want to go against the grain because it's carnal. It's mortal. Hello. Your body is never going to fully submit. Paul said, I buffet. He said, I buffet my body daily. I mean, he gets it under one day, wakes up next morning, it's ready to just rebel again. Gets it under, goes to bed, gets up, next day it's ready to rebel again. Come out of a Holy Ghost meeting. Go to bed, get up, it's ready to rebel again. It's the nature of the carnal, it's the, that's the carnal nature. But man is a spirit. He has a soul, he lives in a body. So the, the, the higher man, the higher part of man is his spirit. And that's where God communes, and that's where God speaks. That's where faith is birthed. In the heart of man, not in your flesh, but in the human spirit. God is the Father of spirits. We commune with Him spirit to spirit. Amen? Yeah. And here, the spiritual man, the man, the inner man, the heart of man, is whom the Spirit of God speaks to. Amen? The Holy Ghost bears witness with our spirits that we're the sons of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, um, as we kind of, I think we're just kind of kind of try, trying to wrap up a few things from last week, make sure we didn't leave anything out there. Um, Proverbs 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct that path. Notice, trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's in your inner man. It's in your heart. You're, it's in the spirit of man that we trust the Lord. Faith is of the heart, not of the head. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. We shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. Where does he, where does he shall not doubt, shall not doubt in his heart. Shall not doubt in the spirit of man. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Glory to God. Can you say amen? So the spirit of man is who, whom, whom communes with the Lord. It's whom the Lord communes with. Glory to God. 
I said glory to God. And so, know this, that spiritual things, now we, we say it this way, that spiritual things are just as real as natural things, but to be honest with you, they're more real. Because the natural realm is a reflection of what's going on in the spirit realm. The spirit realm is not a reflection of the natural. The natural is a reflection of the spiritual. Remember when, um, I believe the book of Hebrews tells us this, in reference to Moses making the temple or the tabernacle, said he did it according to the heavenly pattern. The earthly tabernacle was a type and a shadow of the heavenly tabernacle. He did it according to what he saw in the spirit. Amen. See, spiritual things are really, in, in reality, they're more real. Now, because we have a, a body and because man um, is born and walks in that fallen nature and becomes so carnal and flesh ruled, it, it takes training from the Spirit of God and the Word of God to develop the human spirit so that it's more in tune, it's, you're more in tune with it than you are the carnal things. That takes time. You know, just don't, you just don't get born again today and you're spiritual, you know, oh, I'm all aware about my spirit. Dad, uh, uh, you know, tomorrow, Dad Hagen, he said, he said, he said, I'd go along six, seven years and wouldn't he know I had a body. Now, what he was saying was, he, he, his body wasn't dominating him. He, he was dominated by his spirit. He wasn't saying he's walking around, walking through walls, being weird. But that his, his, that he, he wasn't aware of his body having dominancy, ascendancy, that the spirit of the man was guiding and leading him and directing him, walking out of his spirit, not out of his, out of his flesh. Now, we all know what happens when you live to your coin your flesh. You do stupid things. You, hear, you get, you get uh, all kinds of voices talking to you. Carnal, I mean, I'm amazed at how carnal some people can be and claim to be spiritual. It just never ceases to amaze me sometimes. I mean, they get talking about the Lord said this and the Lord said that. You think, my goodness. I mean, you know, they got, they got, they got text messaging with the Lord. And it's ding, 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 ding. You know, the Lord spoke, the Lord said this, the Lord said that, the Lord showed me this, the Lord showed me that. I believe God speaks to us. I believe God communes with us. But I'd like, I'd, I'd like to see the Lord tell you to do something like walk in love. Hello. I've had some people telling me the Lord spoke to me and told me to do this and told me to do that. And I'm supposed to go do this. And I'm supposed to handle this this way. I'm supposed to do that that way. The Lord showed me where I didn't have to be the devil's doormat. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Amazing. And all those the Lord told them, he never told them to walk in love. Huh. Huh. <laughs> well, that went over big. No, because you know, your, 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 your flesh is telling you what you want to hear. The flesh has to be kept under. If you're going to understand spiritual things, you're going to have to live uh, spiritually. You have to live, uh, live out of your spirit. Train and develop the human spirit. Be in tune with the spirit of God. So that he can tell you walk in love before he tells you, you know, to leave and go to another church. I'm amazed at people who, who, who God showed them they're supposed to leave and go to another church. They, they, and they never walked in the spirit a day at a time that they were in the church they were in. They were always carnal, always walking carnally. The Lord showed, they get revelations about how God's supposed to, they're supposed to leave and go to a different church. God showed me. God showed you? Yeah, God showed me. Yeah, but you weren't walking in love with so-and-so in the church. He told me, I, he told me that my heart's right. If your heart's right, your flesh ought to follow it. I, I think we come up with stuff that's just not scriptural. Are you here? Paul said in one place, and actually to the church of Corinth, 
He said, you know, one of you say, I'm a Paul. Another says, I'm a Apollos. And I'm of that one. He said, uh, said I'm of Christ. And you know what he says about that? He said, are you, are you not yet carnal? Are you not yet carnal? Hello. <laughs> Y'all like it when you get on this, when I get on this kind of stuff, don't you? I can tell. I can tell. You love it. You say, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to see where that one is. Yeah, I was in the third chapter here. It says, I could, listen, this is what Paul says. Right after he says, but we have the mind of Christ, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. He just got through saying you have the mind of Christ, but I can't speak unto you as spiritual. Isn't that amazing? He just got through saying, but you had the mind of Christ, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. <clears throat> I fed you with milk. And hitherto you were not able to bear it. They can't even handle milk. And neither are ye now able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas among you there is envy and strife, divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Um, one translation says as mere, as, as mere men. The margin says according to man, which be according to the ways of, of fallen men. For a while one saith, I'm of Paul, another I'm of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he finishes chapter 2, which is really not, you know, they, you wonder why they picked right there to put a chapter. Because the word and is not the beginning of a chapter. You don't start a chapter and. I mean, if you go study your English, you never start a paragraph with and. Because and is a continuation of the thought that preceded it. So, if we take the, the, the chapter 3 out there and that verse 1 out, he says, For, for, the, for we have known the mind of the Lord, but that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. And I, brethren, could not speak, could, uh, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in the Christ. So even though they had the mind of Christ, they're carnal. Even though they possessed the mind of Christ, they were carnal. Why? Because they were yielding to that nature. They were going around saying stuff and saying, oh, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. The Lord told me, the Lord showed me. The Lord gave me a revelation that I'm supposed to leave the church. You hear, I mean, I hear this stuff. Listen, this is, this is nothing new. This, I've heard this stuff for years. People get real spiritual. They come walking in, the Lord showed me. Well, yeah, well, why didn't he show you to stop talking about so-and-so in the church? When, when did the Lord not, why didn't the Lord tell you to stop talking about me, the pastor? I, it just amazes me how he told you, and you had such a divine visitation of God that you're, supposed, you, that you're free and supposed to leave and go somewhere else, and he didn't tell you to shut up talking about the pastor. When his word says, touch not the anointed. Amen. When his word says, we've seen not an accusation against an elder. Yeah. When his written word says one thing, and yet you get a revelation that there's not even a written scripture about. See, we, we think we're, we, we don't learn to live, we, we don't know how to live from our spirits. Yeah. We're so fleshful, we're so carnal. And the church has to grow up. I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of people who go around talking about a spouse and they got this, this super, I had a roommate. He saw more angels than I think there existed. <laughs> Now, I'm being a little facetious there. But every time I turn around, there's my angel, there's my angel, there's my angel, there's my angel, there's my angel. I mean, all the time. He's divorced out of the ministry and shipwrecked. Now, I don't rejoice in that. But when, you're, when you don't do the things the Word says to do, and you all of a sudden you're having all these revelations, 
you're seeking after these things. Or you sit around and, and get all these revelations about what God's telling you and you're not doing the written word already. You're, you're not doing the written word. I don't believe God lets you off the hook and gives you some special, I've heard people, have people tell me this before. Well, the Lord says, you know, he, he, he knows my heart and that's all that matters is my heart. And I'm sorry, it is more than your heart. David had a, had a, a, a heart after, uh, David the son of Jesse had a heart after God. He committed adultery and murder. And he got right. But that didn't justify what he did. As a matter of fact, God sent the prophet there to clean his house. And the only thing, I'm going to tell you, the only thing that kept David from receiving the judgment he pronounced on himself. Go read that story. Remember when, when, remember when Nathan came? I don't know why I'm over here on this, but it's good anyhow. We're talking about living out of our spirits. So I'll tell you, if we would learn to live out of our spirits, we, there's a lot of things that go on in church and go in people's lives and things they do and things they say that God said they wouldn't be doing, they wouldn't be saying that God's saying them. Yeah. Well, the Lord showed me I don't have to do that. That's uh, amazing how people get revelation about what God's let them out of doing and can't get a revelation about what the Word says to do. I, I just, I never cease to be amazed. And people sit around and go, oh, he heard from heaven. Yeah. Baloney. Yeah. Now the devil could say, my son too. Oh, yeah. And I'll be, but I'll be real honest with you. A lot of times people's own soul and flesh says, my son. Uh -huh. It's just, uh, it's just their own personal desire and want, and they dress it up and claim it on God, and everybody kind of goes, ooh, well, you can't touch that because they said God said it. Well, I can judge it. Yeah. I can judge it according to the Word. Right. We need to be more spiritual. If it doesn't line up with the Word, we just don't need to sit there and go, okay, if you say God said it. No, if it doesn't line up with the Word, God didn't say it. Amen. Hallelujah. But, uh, you know, people having, having revelations. The Lord showed me. See, that is a tactic. You know what that really is? That's a manipulation control tactic. Now, we used to have a fellow that went to our church here. He was an African-American uh, part of our church, had um, been involved, you know, in, in, in universities and taught at, uni at, at, was actually taught classes over at A&T uh, in, in a field that he was in. And he, came, he, he, said, he said, Pastor, he said, um, where I work and in that university, they teach African-Americans how to manipulate white people. Yeah. And here's how they do it. You're a racist. It's, 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 it's deliberate. It's all about control, and it's a manipulation tactic. The minute that, that an African American calls a white person a racist, that white person is now on the defensive to prove they're not a racist, and they can control them and make them do anything. And anything you do that they don't like, they can just call you a racist because you've got racial issues, you're a racist, and now you're, you're bending over backwards to prove to them that you're not, and they're controlling and manipulating you the whole way. He said they teach, they teach them that there. And this isn't a white guy going over. This is, a, this is African American, black, whatever, you know, terminology. You know, I, whatever. It's true. You know? It's, it's a tactic. Now listen. Now that, the, see, the world does that. But I'm going to tell you something. People in the church do the same thing. They come up to you and say, the Lord showed me, or the Lord told me, or the Lord said to me. Now, you've got to call him a liar, basically. So they use that as a control tactic to garner your support, approval, or, you, or, or, or shut you up from, from saying anything contrary to it. And then the Lord showed me I'm supposed to do this. No, you, know, you may even go further and say the Lord, you know, and those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Well, yeah, that's true. But if, they, if you're being led by the Spirit of God, you're being led in line with the Word of God. I said in line with the Word of God. 
You know, a, you know, there's not a scripture that covers every single action you'll ever take in life, but you're going to be led in line with the Word of God. Amen. But those are tactics that Christians use to diffuse other Christians to make them look spiritual. Hello. I had, I had one guy tell me one time that, you know, the church they were in. I love this one. The church that they were in, the, the, the pastor had come into a, a certain area um, to start a church. And when he came, he was hooked up with a well-known ministry. Well, he used that well-known ministry to kind of get his foot in the door and get started. Well, then he switched over allegiance to another uh, pastor in the area in a, in a closer city but that, that was well-known and started using him as his pastor until he, he had gained favor and support and approval from that pastor and people started coming to his church because of that. And then he moved on to another nationally person. And he said, you know, and the guy said, I said, what is this? He said, oh, you know, well, he outgrew him. Oh, how spiritual does that sound? <laughs> when all they're doing is using name, stepping stone names to, grow, to, to build their ministry off of the different names, and they keep us reassociating re, re, re with a bigger name each time, but it sounds spiritual if he outgrew him. That's a flying raspberry for those who are listening. Those of you who are watching got to see it. Hallelujah. But it sounds so spiritual. He outgrew him. You know, I became stagnant there. Well, I, I, you know, I understand, you know, if you're in a church and, you know, uh, you're in a church that doesn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you, you got a problem. I understand that. There, there is, there, the, there's those kind of cases. You're in a church that doesn't believe in healing and you, you're, 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 you found out just from the Bible. I understand that. But I'm talking about people who believe in the same, who believe in the same way. Had the same, or, or of like precious faith. Right. Believe the same. Teach the same. Amen? Hello? Now, I, Dad Hagen, now see, here, here's, here's, here's the difference. Uh, I, I've heard Dad Hagen talk about when he was pastoring his last church. They never had it so good. I mean, the salary was good. I mean, the parsonage was good. They were taking care of the best they'd ever been taken care of. I mean, life was just hunkadory. And the Lord began, and he just wasn't satisfied. I mean, everything in the natural was just the best it had ever been. I mean, they're making more money. They, I mean, the, the church was paying the more money they'd ever been paid. For, been paid. Had, a, had a wonderful parsonage they were living in. I mean, they, you know, they, they paid for them to go to the conventions. They, they just, the church just took care of them. Wonderful. Lovely people. Just, just blessed. But it was dissatisfied. There was a change. And he had to go out on the road and give all that up and go out on the road. Now, that's the only one I've ever heard talk about that everything was great and God told him to leave. Yeah. Go talk to most people. They're disgruntled with something or somebody and then they get a revelation they're supposed to leave. Check it out. Check it out. They're not happy. See, they're not going, Pastor, I don't get it. I'm, I'm getting fed every week. I'm in every service. I'm here early. I'm here for prayer. I don't get it. I just don't understand, Pastor. I mean, my family's blessed. We're, we're, just, we're just growing and blessed. So blessed, so blessed, so blessed here. And yet, and yet, there's something on the inside telling me that I need to move on to, I need to be, be somewhere else. But I don't want to go. I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I've never had anybody come do that. In all the years of ministry, not one time has that ever happened. Hello? Usually somebody's mad at somebody, they're usually mad at me. Um, and one person tell me they're mad at me, they didn't know why. I'm just mad at you. Well, why? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, brother, if you can find out what it is, we can work that out. You know, I'm just mad at you. 
I sure wish I knew what it was. <laughs> You know, I mean, I can't, I can't even look for a blind spot in my own life since you don't know what it is you're mad about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't even take it as constructive criticism and go check it out and deal with it. Yeah. I'm just mad at you. You ever thought it might be the devil? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> anyway, you know, spiritual people. They, we need to live out of our spirits and not out of our, not out of our flesh. See, the flesh is what gets offended. The flesh is what gets, um, it's not happy. It's not satisfied. Um, but it's, and I, it's not, not satisfied. It's just not happy, mad, agitated. A lot of times it's just because people didn't get their way. Other times... It's called seeds got planted in them from somewhere else. And they never recovered. I had a situation um, a number of years ago. We had, a, we had a, a traveling minister come in and one of our staff people, he pulled them aside at church and started talking to them about helping him on the mission field. Come with me on the mission field. You can be a blessing to my ministry. He tells me afterwards, well, I talked to so-and-so about, you know, uh, you know, maybe traveling with me and, and, and leaving and going on mission field with me. I knew you wouldn't mind. I said, yes, I do. I said, they're important to our church. They're important to our ministry. What we're doing, well, yours is bigger and better. You're, you're, you're doing more for the Lord, so it's more important they go with you. That, that was the attitude. That's wrong. I said, that's wrong. But see, that seed got planted. And over the next few years, three or four times, uh, they wanted to leave. One time, they, they had already resigned from, the, from working at the church and um, had planned on moving to another city to start a church. And that didn't work out, and we received them back and loved on them and, you know, gave them a place again. But, you know, they just never, and finally, just, and when they left, there was, there was no real reason. Just, I, I believe the person told me in, in my office one day, said, unless you understand, I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying this cause, to hurt anybody. I'm saying this because we have to understand things happen, and we need, we need to live from our spirit, not our flesh. They said, well, you know, the Lord, I can't really even say the Lord told me to leave. I just decided that, you know, no guts, no glory, so I jumped and left. That was the basis for leaving. No guts, no glory. I mean, at least they had, the, they had the character to say that they, get, they can't say the Lord told them to leave. But they said that, you know, no guts, no glory. What, what kind of, you know, what happened? See, so, way back there, a seed got planted by another minister. And they never, they never recovered. They got never got fully recovered out of that. They got seeded into someone. So we got to be, you know, ministers have to be careful. You just don't go around fishing other people's churches to build your ministry. I had a guy, we had a guy in the area, he was pastoring a church, and he started after our, you know, we've been here for some time, he, he came and started a church and, and had relatives that were in our church. And uh, called him up one day, said, why don't you get out of that church where you ain't doing nothing, come help me. Well, what makes your church more important than mine? Yeah, well, they, they were in charge, of, they, they were doing, uh, they were in charge of youth at the time. And actually doing a good job. Um, but, you know, when people offer you money to come work, and you're working volunteer. Yeah, well, first of all, they said, no, no, we, we're, 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 we're got, it won't, six months, they were gone. So seeds get planted in people's thinking. I said, those seeds get into people's thinking. And that's why we have to live out of our spirits and not out of our flesh. Hello? It's so easy to, to, to let the flesh dominate. What's this got to do with living by faith? I'm going to tell you something. If you can't live out of your spirit, you're not going to live by faith. Amen. If you can't learn to train and live out of your human spirit, you'll never learn, be able to live by faith. Because faith is of the heart and not of the head. <clears throat> and I don't say any of these things to hurt anybody. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, but you can use these same things to help people. Not make the same mistakes. Listen, I had people trying to get me to, to leave the church in Greenville when I was down there. You start a pastor, Ed, assistant. You, know, you start a church, I'll go with you. They told me that. They just told me that. And I said, no, you won't. 
I said, because the Lord ever leaves me to start a church, you'll be so far away from here, you won't be able to come. Because, you know, I will never hurt this church. God sent me here to help it, not to hurt it. You know, my gift was to help, not to hurt. Yeah, yeah, you start a church, I'll go with you. Listen, the devil, now listen, don't, don't think the devil won't take, take that stuff and try to, try to get you to do some stuff. I can go start my own ministry. I got a following. I'm going to tell you what usually happens when that stuff happens. It tears the churches up and nobody wins. <coughs> the one that told the relatives to come over and help them, not even in the ministry right now. You know, we, we, we pray that God will restore in the ministry. We'd like to see him back in the ministry. We'd like to see him restored to the things of the Lord. I mean, we always want to see that. You know, the gifts and callings of God without, gifts and callings of God are without repentance. There's still a call in their life. There's still, there, there's still an anointing there for them to walk in. But you see, when you start living out of your flesh, you can mess things up. You can become shipwrecked. Are you here? And so it's important we learn to live out of our human spirits in accordance with the Holy Spirit speaking to our spirits. And not be flaky. And I'm going to tell you, if, if the word and word says do something, we're going to do it. I'm going to tell you something right now. If we don't learn to walk in love, I'm, I'm hitting on this a lot lately. If we don't learn to walk in love, we'll never be able to live out of our spirits. That's the one thing we've got to, we've got to get settled is the ability to walk in love. Now don't tell me, don't tell me you're walking in love with someone and you can't be in the same room with them. Or the sheer mention of their name turns you into a Tasmanian devil. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if that was a good Taz or not, but that's pretty good, okay. <laughs> Okay, hallelujah. A little tornado there. <clears throat> Are you here? I mean, so you're, you're, you're going you're gonna, to you know, blow gaskets over the mention of somebody's name, and then the Lord's telling you what to do. Baloney. If I'm talking to you. Are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> That's exactly who I'm talking to. See, if we're living out of our spirits, we, we put down carnal things. Are y'all here? We put aside carnal things. The, you know, uh, the Scripture says that the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. But the wisdom that is from above is easy to be entreated, full of peace. Amen? Are you here? The wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. What do you mean devilish? It makes decisions that are contrary to wholesome doctrine. Well, I had a revelation. Yeah, but where'd that revelation come from? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down strongholds. Amen. The Bible tells us to bring the captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There are things coming your way all the time that don't mean they're of God. And they can be supernatural. Don't mean they're of God. They can be a supernatural wisdom and still not be godly wisdom. They could be demonic wisdom. Amen. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Now the original Hebrew or Hebrew says destruction. The end thereof is destruction. Amen. Amen. So it's from the spirit of man that we, we need to live, commune with God, understand and, and separate the flesh, the carnality, the ways of the flesh, 
and stop running around every time you open your mouth and saying, God told me. Hello? Because I'm going to tell you, 90% of the people you tell that to are going, I don't believe it. They may not have the guts to tell you, but they don't believe it. <clears throat> the Lord showed me. The Lord told me. God told me. The Lord said. The Lord. Our, 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 Dad Hagen said something interesting. The Lord would tell him stuff, and he wouldn't tell anybody. Hello? He wouldn't tell anybody. He was going to take a church one time. The Lord said, you'll be the next pastor of that church. They came to him and said, Brother Hagin, we want you to come and preach. And you know, da, 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 da. And he said, okay. And he said, what do you think? Well, he said, I'll, I'll preach. He wouldn't tell him anything. The Lord told him, you'll be the next pastor. Hello? I said, hello? They took the vote and had all but three people vote for him. And, and, and that church was all split up. Everybody but three people voted for him. They, they just stood, the, the deacons and everybody stood in amazement that, 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 that he actually, I mean, it was so bad that when the trial period, are you here? He said, he turned his wife one night in bed and said, because what happened was, the deacon comes in and look, I know you stay with this family this night, but you know what? You, if, the, if this other people in the church get to find out you stayed over here, they're going to think, they're going to think that you were favoring one side over the other and they won't vote for you. So we want you to go stay with them and, and put them in a, diff, in a family that was in the other group. And after about three or four nights, because he was preaching like uh, Sunday through Thursday or Friday or something, you know, and they were going to vote on him at the end of the week. That was their, that was their bylaws. He kept, they kept moving him from house to house one night on the floor. The faith preacher on the floor. He leaned over her. He said, you know, if I didn't know the Lord told me, I'd take our stuff, go get in the car, and we'd just drive off in the middle of the night. And they'd wake up tomorrow morning and say, what happened to Brother Hagin? <laughs> <laughs> he said he got the pastor in that church and stuff was going on. And he looked over her. He, he, he'd come home almost every night and say, you know, if I didn't, the Lord told me. <laughs> I'd just back me one of them trucks up in the middle of the night and load up all the furniture. And they'd come in the next one and say, what happened to the pastor? And they would know it wasn't the rapture because the furniture would be gone too. <laughs> he said, I just wouldn't tell them a thing. I'd just leave. <laughs> Hello. See, I'll tell you, when you're led by your spirit, it's not always going to be glorious. And hunkadory and lovely. Are you here? I said, Are you here? <clears throat> I'll be honest with you. I, I can, I can, I can relate. I look back over the years. I think I know God supernaturally told me I was going to take come here and pastor this church. Supernaturally, I didn't tell anybody for six months except my wife, and I didn't tell her for three. Hello. And I had my pastor going about it every week. Well, what are you supposed to do with our church? I'm just waiting on the Lord. I was waiting for him to tell me I could tell him. <clears throat> finally, after, after several months, he finally came and said, we got into heaven. So I said, well, I'm supposed to take that church. I've known since February. This was August. I've known since February that I was going to pastor that church. I said, but I just, you know, I was waiting. I was, I was walking it out, proving it out. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm glad it happened that way. Because I've probably been gone 23 and a half years ago. <laughs> I'm serious. And then about 18 years ago, and 15 years ago, and probably about five years ago, and maybe the beginning of this year. There have been, there have been numerous times and occasions if I hadn't known the Lord said, well, if the Lord said, you should be have 5,000 people by now. Is that right? Well, who told Philip to leave the citywide revival of Samaria and go out into the wilderness and get one eunuch saved? If the Lord was in it, he should have had the whole nation of Ethiopia saved. Isn't that right? Pulled him out of a citywide revival. Miracles, signs, wonders, piling up the crutches and, the, and the, all the implements for, for crippled people. And miracles, signs, wonders, great joy in the city. They sent Peter and John down there to get them all filled with the Holy Ghost. Philip, went out, Philip was sent out to the wilderness, to a, the desert. He's out in the middle of the desert, and some unit rides up on a chariot, and he sees him reading from the Bible and says, well, or from Isaiah, he says, uh, I can expound to you the, may, may war, the way more perfectly. Get some saved, they pull up the water, get some baptized, and he gets translocated. Hallelujah. 
30 miles away he came. He found himself 30 miles away. Called away by the Spirit of God. Yeah, but if the Lord's in it, you don't go to one person with a, you know, who says? See, when you're led by your spirit, see, that's what that's, I'm telling you, if you're going to live by faith, you're going to have to live by your spirit. <clears throat> Amen. And let God speak to your spirit. And he's going to tell you to do stuff sometime. I, I heard Dad Hagen say this on a, on a, on a, so yeah, he said, the first church he pastored, and the last church he said, he said the, 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 the um, success of his ministry came on the things he learned in that first church he pastored and some from the last church. He learned some things about living by faith in difficult places. Hello? Went through some things. Proved it out by the Spirit of God. Led, led. <clears throat> like I said, if I didn't know the Lord told us I was going to pastor this church, I'd pack up in the middle of the night and leave. Not the Lord told. Now let me, and let's see. Here, here's the other side of that thing. Just because you go somewhere and there's a lot of success, don't mean it's the Lord. Hello. I've seen gimmick preachers get nine hundred thousand dollar offerings from somebody's estate. Seen it happen. Know the minister that did it. He, he went down and courted the person until they died. He'd fly down to meet with them. Family sued. And there was some things found out. He went to jail. Just because, well, I have to tell you, he was driving around in $70,000 uh, specialized boats out on the river. Hello? Wearing gold. All over the place. I mean, he made Mr. T look like he was a, a, a pimp. You know, see how much tea, gold, gold Mr. T used to wear, right? You know? Ain't uh, nothing. I mean, this guy had it. Success? But it wasn't God. So you can't, you can't look at your brother or your sister and see them driving. I tell you, the, uh, the, the, the I hope y'all getting something out of this. But, um, I remember Janie and I, when we first got married, we, it was a girl we led, we led to the Lord, really basically led to the Lord. She got filled with the Holy Ghost, came into our church. I mean, she turned on to the Lord, prophesied, flowing the gifts of the Spirit. You couldn't keep her out of church. But she, she was dating, dating this guy. He, he, now, she, now she, was a, she was moved by your car because she was prettier than he was handsome. And he drove a 280Z, brand new back then. Had him, had him a Z. Had him a nice job. Hello. Had success. He talked to me and told me God had called him to the ministry. <clears throat> well, good. What are you doing to prepare? Hello. I quit my job, went to Rama, came back. Wouldn't, couldn't take a job. I understand, you know, um, I, I, I hope y'all get, get something out of this. When I got out of Rama and came back to Eastern North Carolina, um, I, had, I had an associate's degree in computer programming. I was an RPG2 programmer. And, you know, and about every little company down there in eastern North Carolina ran it. We, that's, why we, that's why our community college had so many, uh, had such a big, big programming school because there were so many shops down there that were uh, system, system 3, system 36, system you know, 34, all that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, eventually 38s and they, but down there, you know, system 3s. I was, I was, you know, RPG programmers. I mean, you had to have them because that's what they all ran. But I came back. And, um, and, and tried to get a job. Applied for jobs. Not to, but I tell them on the application, I can't work nights or weekends. Well, I'm sorry, you know, that's, that's the jobs that are available. Is the, is the night, is the third shift, the second and third shift operator, programmers, you know, because you're entry level. I mean, you didn't work long enough to get out of the entry level. You had to have two years. And I see, I've worked about nine months and took off a rama. Hallelujah. I didn't have my two years under my belt. Well, we can't hire you if, you don't, if, you're, if you're not willing to. 
And I did get a job. I did get an interview from Hackney and Company. Hackney and Sons. They make truck bodies for, you know, beer companies and Pepsi, you know, you see. Their, their truck bodies, those, those trucks that hold the cases of stuff were made by Hackney and Sons down in Washington, North Carolina. I got called in for an interview with them. But they had done some research on me and found that I was, I was reborn. So the guy asked me, the interviewer. I mean, I could probably, I could probably sued them back then for that. And now today you could have. Yeah, you've been, I heard you've been reborn. Well, yeah. I've been born again. You know, we see, I had, I had good reputation by instructors that I was an ex excellent RPG programmer. But I got, when I got turned on, I was radically crazy to the Lord. And so, well, I've heard you've been reborn. You know, now we make truck bodies that, that are sold to beer companies. Does that bother you? Well, yeah, they're sold. I mean, you know, they're sold to Pepsi. They're sold to Coke. They're sold to whoever buys them. You're making, you're making a um, whatever, and you put a paint job on it. You know, I mean, you know, you're not selling beer. You know what I'm saying? So I said, well, I don't have a problem. They, they wouldn't hire me because, because I, you know, I wouldn't work nights and weekends. Well, you know, why wouldn't you work nights and weekends? I'm called to the ministry. That's what I'm called to do. I know I'm called to preach. How am I going to be in church and, and, and grow in ministry uh, to the place of full-time ministry if I'm working nights and weekends? I can't come by and get and, and get get services. And back then we didn't have the internet. You didn't. I mean, you know, you had a cassette player. Yeah. I mean, we were all we were almost real real era. Y'all here? You go home. So, be, and they, 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 the the headhunters were telling me, well, "You're going to have to work nights." Well, I'm not working nights or weekends. Got one company, one guy called me and said, what's your, what's your goals in five years? I wouldn't lie. Well, my goal in five years is to be in full-time ministry. They want you to tell them. They, they, they know. They know. You're going to work two years, get your two years experience, and then you're heading out the door to whoever's hiring level one programmers. They know it. But it's, 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 it's a game. Lie to me. At least tell me what I want to hear. And I wouldn't do it. Well, my five years, I want to be in full-time ministry. But I'm a good programmer. I can, be, I can help you now. <clears throat> you know, I probably would just say in five years, uh, I plan on being the best person I can be or something. I don't know. I was, I was really young and dumb. I didn't, know how to, I didn't know how to filter without lying, you know. And I wouldn't lie. So, but, you know, my, my vision, <clears throat> my goal, my heart, my, my purpose was ministry. Now, I pay the price because that money would have been a whole lot better programming than it would have been fl flinging chicken at Parker's Barbecue. Are you here? Coming home greasy all the time. <clears throat> I mean, I'd go out and have to go to the bank or something during the day and somebody say, you work at Parker's, don't you? He can just smell you. You smelled like Parker's. <laughs> I mean, he just hoped you didn't get around somebody that was starving. <laughs> Find some kid down there, honk, honk down on your leg. What's wrong, kid? I want me a chicken leg. All right, you know. <laughs> it's pretty well, but, but ministry was more important <clears throat> than the natural things. Obeying God. They, that girl got married, that guy, and she was wearing, always, always had on something new. Always had on something new, fancy, the hot, hottest fashion. He said he's called to the ministry. <clears throat> I was willing to pay the price. I worked in that stupid barbecue. And unless I, you know, I love the park because they're good people. You know, I say stupid. You know, in, re in relation to what I could have been doing, air conditioning, sitting behind a desk, writing, writing code, which I enjoy, by the way. I do enjoy writing code. <clears throat> I know you might think that's weird, but I enjoyed it. There's something to me, it's like create something. You know, you, you write all the code, you put it in, and it actually works. There's just something creative about it. Yeah, okay, okay. You're not a code puncher as per se, yeah. But Dick, Dick can agree. All right. There's just something creative about that. It's just really cool, you know. Um, but working in that restaurant, <clears throat> you know, people you know going on, buying houses, 
buying cars. You're driving the demon car, demon car, demon car. <laughs> Janie's car, we finally, we finally did buy us a, 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 the first newer car we bought had 70,000 miles on it. It was the K car, it was the Citation by Chrysler. Two tone. X car, I think that's what they call them, the X cars or the K cars or something. I took Janie's old Toyota and sat up under the um, mulberry tree. And the birds would eat the mulberries and drop red poop on the back of the car. I'm coming home from Parker's one day and I get pulled by the cops because they wanted to know what the blood was on the back of the car, where it came from. Are you here? But our friends called to the ministry, kept working their jobs and kept living the high life, <clears throat> driving the fancy cars, buying a house. Yeah, every wife wants a house. They want their own place. It's just something they want. And you can't give it to them. But I told her, I said, I said, you stick with me. You stick with me. We'll walk in another place before it's all over. You stay with me, sweetie. It's all going to be okay in the end. There's a price being paid. Come back to alumni week and your friends are pastoring churches. What are you doing? I'm working in a barbecue restaurant, working in the ministry of health. So, oh, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. And uh, then they go talk to somebody else because they couldn't brag about their business. They couldn't compare their ministry to yours. It's a price to pay. <coughs> when you live out of your spirit and you obey God, oh my. <laughs> Today, their friends that was called to the ministry, his wife is back, has, has renounced Christ, mocks the blood of Jesus, openly mocks the blood of Jesus. He's still not in the ministry. <laughs> Left the church and said he was the pastor of their home. Well, he did have a small church. He had like 10 kids. Past, God made him the pastor of his home. Hogwash. They've lived the life, and now his wife is in danger of eternal damnation. She mocks the blood of Jesus. In, in danger has already lost her salvation. I, I'll tell you things I saw, I don't, I don't think there's any question. People I know that were in the ministry and, and, and so forth and talking about how great are, are, are shipwrecked. Because they wouldn't follow God. They followed the success. I tell you, my brother, sister, there's a, there's a, there is going to be times you're going to have to pay a price to follow God. Amen. To follow from your heart. To do the right thing. And to live out of your spirit. Living by faith. It's called the good fight of faith. It didn't say it was the joy ride of faith. There's going to be times it's a fight. It's just a battle. To win. And you can win. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Oh my. My, 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 my. Oh, but the joy. I've traveled the world preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. We've got kids who serve God. Hallelujah. Nathan's told us he's supposed to go to Ramah. We don't know if he's going to go this year or maybe, or maybe two years from now, but he's told us three times in the past six months he's supposed to go to Ramah. I haven't pushed him. I haven't said, son, you've got to go follow in daddy's footsteps. As a matter of fact, I tell him, you, if you, God don't call you, you don't want to be in the ministry. <laughs> and of course, I don't have to tell him that. They've seen it. They've seen the things that happen. They've, but you know what? To see your kids see you go through what we've been through at different times and still want to obey God 
and, and follow God in the ministry. You know, hallelujah, they've learned something. They've learned how to live out of their hearts and out of their, out of their spirits and to follow God. Oh my, hallelujah. What a joy to have preached all over the world. What a joy to have pastored the people. You know, and there have been people who have come in, left, and gone all other places, but you know what? You know, we, 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 we invested in them. We invested out of their spirit into them. Hallelujah. We just trust they'll use it to be a blessing. I mean, sometimes you get tired of hearing it. I've had people call me, Pastor Ed, I got all my fundamentals and all, everything I learned about faith and everything I learned about this came from, came from being a faith of victory. I'm thinking, why'd you leave? You know, you always went, well, why did you leave? <laughs> you know? Hallelujah. But to live by faith means you're going to have to live out of your spirit. You're going to have to follow your spirit that follows the voice of God. But the voice of God is going to lead you in line with the Word of God. People think that changing locations is going to make them happy. All you've done is you've removed the pressure for a moment. You got out from under the pressure. But you're going you're to have to go back to the place that you were missing it to start with to get it right to move on. Dad Hagen left his last church and the Lord said, you got to go back. You didn't finish what I sent you to do. So he sent him back for another year to finish what he didn't finish. Hallelujah. Boy, it got one of those serious times. <clears throat> but you know, we, if we always preach that it's always wonderful, glorious, there's never any challenges. That if you speak the word and could make your confession, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Don't teach people how to live out of their spirits. We've done you a disservice. Amen. I know there are things ahead for me in ministry. There are, there are things that God's going to have me do. Praise the Lord. That had, we, had we not been faithful all these years, we wouldn't have been able to do them. There's some, there's some things out there for, for you know, ministry-wise. There's some doors opening. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to take the church growing, which is 100 people on the 13th of May. Church growing to get to do it. There's some things we got to do that's going to take, it's going to take the church being bigger than it is to do it. There are places I must go, things I must do from this church. And you're going to have a part in it. And we do make a difference. We do make a difference in the earth. Hallelujah.